Well, I think these are very exciting guidelines, and the re here's the reason why. I think they, the guideline committee spent a lot of time being able to present summaries of these guidelines in a very easy to read and very quick access format. The uh, clinical practice part of the heart failure uh, guideline is, is very much the same as it's been in the past in terms of the fine details of how to treat heart failure, what drugs to use, whether devices should be incorporated. But the, the key to these new guidelines is the fact that you can very quickly find answers to all the care issues you need in heart failure. This is a big difference. These are tables that you can find quick lookups. There are flow diagrams to help identify the method of taking care of a patient. So I, I think from the standpoint of this guideline, this is a must-have. It should be in your, in your uh, uh, digital reader. You can look up a table almost instantly while you're seeing a patient. So that's the big thing. The format's changed so that it makes it very accessible. Well, like all guidelines, they are very, very comprehensive and difficult to read. I think the uh, the users of guidelines, many of the members of the college, and even the guideline writers themselves have, have commented on the fact that trying to find specific pieces of information in a two or three hundred page guideline is very difficult. Uh, and because of that, the guidelines haven't been, haven't been read as much as one would expect them to be. Uh, so the biggest thing that's been, uh, that's been added here is the ability to find information quickly. From the standpoint of, as I said before, clinical practice, the, the things that we've established by clinical trials are pretty similar. There have been a few added on things here and there, but the key thing is that this becomes a hands-on document that you can use every day in your practice. Well, heart failure has become a, a fairly complex uh, disease to manage because of the different levels of severity. We have class D heart failure where transplant and ventricular assist devices, implanted heart pumps are needed. You have class one heart failure, or I'm sorry, class A uh, heart failure guideline, which basically doesn't require treatment of heart failure, but requires prevention, prevention of hypertension, prevention of hyperlipidemia, prevention of heart attack. So from that standpoint, I think the uh, approach to the management of heart failure uh, being as complex as it is, is well laid out in these new guideline formats based on the severity of the heart failure and the different modalities of therapy. This, this takes a lot of the guesswork out of trying to figure out uh, what do I do with a patient that's a class A versus a class C heart failure patient? How do I treat different New York Heart Association classes of severity? I think it makes it much easier to approach the care of the patient because of the way the information is presented.